Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie Mary and uh, today I have, I think it's part three of ugly sustainability hacks that are very practical, very sustainable, very zero waste, but perhaps not super aesthetic. I think I make this disclaimer in every single one of these videos, but I don't think these things are ugly. This is just to say that there are tons more to do, there are tons more sustainable habits and way to be green than what looks good on an Instagram feed. That is that that is the overall premise of this video. It's understanding that I'm not actually calling them ugly. I'm just saying that it's a contrast to the curated way we look at sustainability and especially zero waste online. It just goes to show that sustainability is a lot more than pretty products that you can buy. It's actually often the complete opposite of that. I found out about this not very long ago, to be honest, and it was actually something I found out because I was talking to one of my friends who has ADHD, and it's something he's been doing for a really long time. So place your condiments in the vegetable drawer and place your vegetables and produce in the door, like where you would normally place your condiments, because you know what condiments you have, so they're not going to go bad, but you often forget what produce you have, and then you buy new produce, and then you just let it rot and completely over-ripen in the bottom of a drawer somewhere, and that's just not it. But when you look at it, every time you open your fridge, the first thing you see is your produce, there's a lot better chance that you will actually use them. This has been such a game changer in my fridge. It's such an easy thing to do, but it has made a tremendous difference. And again, I don't think this is ugly, but when we see pictures of really curated, beautifully organized fridges, it doesn't look like that. And this might look a little bit more chaotic to some people. Between 30 and 40% of all the food produced in the world gets tossed, so. No. The next thing is something that I I just love it because I gave it a name and because I gave it a name I now love it. I call it my shower bucket. A shower bucket is a bucket you place in your shower. Aha. Uh -huh. And when you turn on your water, it's it's usually taking it a while to get warm so you can step into the shower and normally that cold water will just run straight down the drain but you can use it to water your plants, for instance. So I have a bucket in my shower and I catch all the cold water that would otherwise just have been running through the drain needlessly. Instead, I use it to water my plants and I save on my water bill and it's also way more sustainable. And this is true, especially in drought risk areas. Think about it, shower bucket, all I'm saying. Thirdly, I want to talk about party recycling bins. When you're throwing a party, you're not necessarily thinking about recycling. At least I've been to a lot of parties where recycling hasn't been a priority, which means that bottles and cans are just left everywhere. And there's a very good chance that a lot of these things won't be recycled. And some people might think it ruins the party vibe to talk about recycling, but simply placing a bin, a large bag, anything like that of the sort in the corner of your party or like over a chair so people can toss their recyclables into the different compartments. That way you don't have to do it the day after when everyone has left and you're just really tired, you wanna do something else, but people are doing it throughout the entire night. Consumers generally tend to be a lot better at recycling, at sustainability during the everyday habits, but when it comes to special occasions, holidays, parties, etc., we fall a little behind. So this is a really good way to make sure it happens gradually instead of you having to do it once the party's over. And this way you make sure that things will actually get recycled. Now this next one is in no way, shape or form a new invention. It is in no way a thing that I just figured out in my brain, but it's something we've been doing in my family and people have been doing for ages and ages and ages. Whenever I have clothes that I know for a fact I cannot use anymore, that either doesn't fit me or it's just too broken to be donated, I upcycle, downcycle, recycle. I reuse anyway the scraps of clothing that might be okay as dishcloths, cleaning cloths, Fine cotton fibers are really, really great for cleaning. So if you have any clothes that you don't know what to do with, turn them into cleaning cloths. It doesn't look as nice as buying new, perfectly matching cloths, but it's so effective. They're so good. I have even, actually, fun fact, um, a couple of years ago, a friend of the family died and me and my brother, along with some other people, inherited everything she owned. And one of the things that I still have from her 
is a sleeve from an old 80s sweatshirt that she used to clean and now I use it to clean. No regrets. There are also tons of other ways you can upcycle old textiles like turning them into patchwork, turning them into filling for pillows, etc. But this way I get to look at these pieces of clothes all the time and they remind me of what they once were and what they are now and I think that's honestly the opposite of ugly. Now I just did an entire video on this but use cardboard or paper that you would either throw to recycling anyway or that for one reason or another cannot be thrown in recycling and make paper pulp or paper clay. With these materials you can make furniture or home decor uh, interior. It's really cool. I have a whole video where I'm turning this week's recycled paper or recyclable paper into paper pulp home decor. And to some people it might be ugly. I don't know. I'm not one of them. I actually think it's pretty awesome. And I know a lot of recycling facilities for paper and cardboard do not accept shredded paper. So use your shredded paper if you have any for some sort of DIY like this. You can also just recycle your paper at home and make greeting cards. I also have a video where I did that and it's a great time, honestly. I cannot actually remember if I've talked about this before. I might have, I don't know, but there's tons of ways to get free elastic bands so you don't have to buy them. Is this ugly? It's ugly in the sense that I honestly feel like elastic bands are a little bit ugly, but they're super practical and you don't need to buy them. Actually, you get them for free all the time. You probably just toss them. So I am here to remind you that once you buy spring onion, spinach, leek, so many asparagus, so many types of produce, they are often tied together with an elastic band and you can use that. You don't have to buy a box of elastic bands when you get them for free all the time. That way you're using a product more time than just once instead of throwing it away. And you actually also use it something that you got for free. So win-win. Uh, now I've always done this because I don't actually like my tea that strong. Um, so I reuse tea bags all the time. Fun fact about tea bags though, the majority of tea bags are actually containing plastic because it's a polyester bag. So tea bags per se, many of them at least, are not the best way to brew your tea. Using a tea egg and loose tea can be tons more sustainable. But if you for one reason or another have a tea bag, use it more times instead of just tossing it and once you're done with it cut open the tea bag and use the tea grinds in your compost to fertilize your plants instead of just tossing it in the bin. We're getting into some really small nitty-gritty practical stuff but if you take notes on paper no shame in that you can use recycled paper and paper that's already been printed and take note on both sides. That means that you have notes where you have other notes on the front make a cross over it perhaps something is printed on one side Either way, it doesn't look the best, but it's tons more sustainable than using fresh new paper to simply use what you already have. Now, this might actually be something that will make what you own look more beautiful, but it's something that you have to do regularly in order for that to work. I don't know. I put this in this list because I feel like it made sense because it's a sustainability hack that's also free. But like, don't cut my head off. Oil your wooden chopping boards. They will last so much longer and you can use basically any type of oil that you have. I usually just use regular olive oil to oil my boards and they will last so much longer. You will not have to buy new. You can use things you already have in your home to do this and it just maintains them. I think the reason why I thought of this for this video is because I often pick up old, crusty, ugly looking wooden chopping boards in thrift stores and I just oil them, maintain them a little bit and and bring them back to life and they are gorgeous, beautiful, amazing. Lastly, let's talk about cords. If you're a person that uses electronic equipment, so basically a person, you will probably also have a drawer filled with old cords. A drawer filled with cords that doesn't work with anything, that doesn't go with anything, that's just there. And oftentimes when we end up decluttering and, and rummaging through our mess, we end up throwing these cords away. But that's a really, really bad idea because any kind of electronic equipment, cords included, have different types of materials built into them that are highly valuable and highly recyclable, like aluminium and gold. And these things can be recycled easily. So one thing you can do is bring them into your local recycling station. You can also donate them to STEM projects at a local university, but you can also use your cords at home to make jewelry or wall hanging or plant holders any kind of thing really, it's pretty cool. But 
don't throw them in the garbage. Please don't throw them in the garbage. There's so many other ways to use them. Any kind of electronic equipment in the garbage is a big no-no. So donate, recycle or reuse at home. And that was it for this video. That was 10 ugly, unesthetic sustainability hacks that are also free, but really, really effective and handy. I hope that you guys liked this video. If you did, leave me a thumbs up and let me know down below if you're doing anything that is sustainable, but somehow or in some way or another unesthetic or ugly, I would love to hear you guys out. Let me know if you want more free, inexpensive sustainability hacks. I would love to make that for you. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day and take really good care of yourselves. Until next time. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!